Well, hello there and welcome to the listing data tab. Not much to see here. If you use the listing spreadsheet, either light version or the pro version, Exceller List or Scan Lister, your data is already going to be in this format and it's going to be super easy to add to this. So we're just going to walk you through the pieces that are here. We're assuming you can already get your data into this. We'll have other videos that show how to get that data from each of those software uh, programs or the other spreadsheets into this, this format here. A couple notes about the listing data tab. You can edit anything within here. It's just a spreadsheet. If your costs are wrong or you need to change them, by all means, you can come in here and change those. Um, simple as just working within Excel regularly. You don't have to be an Excel wizard to figure that out. Um, one note, you do not want to ever edit anything in the M SKU or the SKU column here because this is what everything else in the spreadsheet keys in on. So your SKUs need to be exactly what you use to list them on Amazon. Your sources should all be identical. And what I mean by that is if you have Grace Library and Grace Library 2, this is now going to show up as a different source when it comes to looking at your metrics. So do that on purpose. Don't do it accidentally. And unfortunately, even if you include a space after your source, even though it looks the same on the spreadsheet, it's going to be treated a little bit differently. So make sure everything is as identical as you can. A couple other notes to keep in mind. The date code was, was something we originally designed and it's no longer needed. So if these are blank, that will not hurt a single thing on the spreadsheet. So do not worry about that. The ASIN is there. If you want to go and look up what your SKU is individually, you're welcome to do that. And you can kind of fine tune or, or, or check to see that everything's working on Amazon as it should. The other couple things that are important is if you change the costs, make sure that they're reflected over here in the total cost column. So the total cost column is simply the cost times the quantity. So a dollar times one, simple math is $1. $1 up here times three as a quantity is going to be $3. So if you do change the cost per item, there's not formulas that automatically fill these in because your data assumes that you did that when you started. So make sure that you do go over and change them on the total costs. If you don't have shipping costs per item, again, not a big deal. Those costs are actually pulled in um, from the sales report. So we actually have your inbound shipping costs if you ship FBA. Uh, so nothing to worry about from that standpoint. But if you do have it, it does help just get slightly better uh, data into your metrics. Now, if you do have some data that's blank or missing, a couple things you can do. One, you can hit this arrow here and it popped up on my other screen, but you'll see a nice little area here. You can sort the data alphabetically or de-alphabetically if you want. You can see all your individual sources, and let's say you wanted to key in on, uh, on Carlin, for example, you could actually look at their data, or you could queue in on everything, and if you ha happen to have some blanks, we're actually gonna deselect all and then actually click on blanks. Now, if you don't have some source data here, and this may be common, especially as you have some original data in here, hopefully you've got some source data in the SKUs. And if you have, remember this is Grace Library, um, you can go ahead and just type that in. Now you can copy paste individually, so Control C or Command C on a Mac, and then Control V will paste it, or pro tip, I've always wanted to say that, you can actually click on a blank cell, go down to where, you're, where you're, um, the bottom that you wanna paste is, hold Shift and click again, and now just hit Control or Command V, and that will fill in there, and now you're done with that. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and click on that again and say Select All. Now remember, blanks here in the date code column don't bother me. I think I left us something to look up in the cost column. So same thing here. We see ones that have zero entered, but again, I've also left some blanks. So we're gonna deselect all. We're gonna select blank, and now these costs Hopefully you've, you've encoded them into your SKUs. So for me, this is Steak Trip. I bought it in November of 2016. It's book number 490 from that particular batch and I paid 75 cents. So the cost per item is gonna be 75. Again, I can copy that, shift and click, carry that down and you can very easily edit the spreadsheet in bulk that way. And again, I already have the total cost over here so nothing to change. I'm all set from that standpoint. So again, getting the data into the listing data tab isn't that challenging. The last thing you're going to want to do before you start running around with the spreadsheet, we're going to make sure we can select all again. So we're going to select all. And then what you want to do is take your date listed and we want to make sure this is in order from oldest to newest. That's going to ensure that the macros work exactly as they should. So go ahead and click by ascending. You can see the oldest inventory I have here is from early 2015. And as you scroll down, I've got plenty of data points all the way through March of 2017. So that's how the, the listing data tab is supposed to work. 
And when you're all said and done, after you paste new data, again, one more uh, trick if you're going to go down to find the bottom piece of data, you can go ahead and grab the slider and try and guess where it is. Or you can simply hit Command or Control and the down arrow, and it will take you to the very bottom row that you have data. So that'll make it very easy when you go to paste new data. You can simply click here, paste your new data into place. And when all is said and done, you'll hit Update Data. The macro will run. You'll see a little bit of a, an indication there from the cursor that it's running, and it shouldn't take more than just a few seconds, so bear with me. And once you're done updating the data, everything else in the spreadsheet will be refreshed, and you can go and check out um, all your awesome business intelligence. One last piece, I do set up um, on the ribbon here, this is Excel for Mac. If you're using Excel for Windows, it looks very similar. Up under the formulas bar, there's an option here called calculation options. I usually turn that to manual. That allows me to make all these changes in the background without the spreadsheet trying to update every time I hit enter. Um, if you want it on automatic and you don't have that much data where it's slowed down, no problem. It'll just run in the background for you. I like to do manual and most of these videos will show it set up this way. When you do want to update uh, individual things on a sheet, you're going to have to come up here and say calculate sheet and that will actually run the calculations if you've changed anything. So if you ever change something and it's not quite updated, the, the likely culprit behind that is coming up here and make sure you hit calculate sheet. So that's all for the listing data tab. Thanks.